Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm here to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. Hands down, one of the biggest, most overlooked areas of women's health is the transition to menopause, known as perimenopause. And depending on how we take care of our bodies during this perimenopause transition can really determine how our bodies thrive in menopause and beyond. Now, as far as I'm concerned, we are simply not talking enough about the 5 to 15 year perimenopausal transition that happens to take place when we are doing the most. Now, I don't know about you, but every woman I know in their late 30s to early 50s are doing big things and juggling all the plates in the air and then some. This big transition deserves our attention. For many women, perimenopause, especially the last three to five years leading into menopause, are the most challenging because the symptoms can get a little out of hand. We're talking about unexplained weight gain, extreme fatigue, sleepless nights, hot flashes, night sweats, migraines, anxiety, unexplained mood swings, brain fog, heavy bleeding, and man, it can all hit you at once. This number of disruptive hormone symptoms can feel like you got Mack trucked with no end in sight. And I'm talking, you know, this is a couple of months that this is going down. It could be three plus years where we're experiencing this level of symptoms. So as you can imagine, it can feel beyond discouraging when you feel like you don't have a real viable solution to addressing some of these big issues. Now, most doctors are going to offer you birth control pills or an IUD or conventional hormone replacement therapy, or maybe even a mood altering drug like an anti-anxiety prescription. But the thing about these solutions is they don't address most of the root cause issues driving the symptoms that I mentioned earlier. And this is really why I wrote my last book, The EO Menopause Solution, because this was one of the only books out there that really outlined some of the biggest root causes and gave you recommendations and pivots so that you could actually thrive, right? Because the best way to navigate this big transition from being fertile and having an ovulatory cycle into menopause, right? The huge transition is understanding what is going on and making a plan to pivot and support your body throughout from the very beginning all the way into menopause and beyond. Now, want the good news? Well, the good news is that there is so much that we can do and there are so many side benefits to making some simple pivots that I'm gonna be sharing with you today in this episode. I want you to know that although your body is indeed changing, there are adjustments that you can make to significantly ease the transition and have you feeling like you are entering into a new beginning, thriving and feeling amazing. Now, a couple of things to note that are very important about successfully navigating the perimenopause transition. First thing, you gotta wanna embrace the physical and emotional changes and be open to making adjustments to your body and your health. Because as your body's changing, you gotta change too, right? We've gotta be open to those pivots. Second thing, you also gotta decide that you are worthy of focusing on you because implementing these changes to support your body will take some time and a little bit of work, but I promise the payoff is so worth it. Not only for these transitional years, but for the many, many years to come after menopause, where so much of the magic happens for many of us. As long as you're feeling fully committed to you and optimizing your health with a few strategic changes, you are going to feel great throughout your 40s and 50s and beyond. And I just want to say that this message is something that I need to hear myself. As I approach 44 this year, I know how critical it is to dial in my daily habits and to make some critical pivots that will greatly improve my energy, metabolism, strength, endurance, and brain function. And here's the thing is I have a really big why. My why is that I never want my son Kingston to feel like I can't keep up. I want to be jumping and bounding and running with him all throughout his childhood. And I don't want him to ever think that his mama can't keep up. His mama can't handle it. I want to come in with strength and endurance and energy to boot. And so that is my why. I think we should all just connect into that why, into that purpose for why we want to feel so good moving throughout our 40s, 50s and beyond. Okay. So now that we are committed together, let's dive into some non-negotiable pivots so that you sail through this transition with a lot of ease and grace. But before I recommend the pivots, and note that these aren't all the pivots I recommend, these are just the ones that I think are really gonna help move the needle for you, that are gonna make the biggest impact. 
but I always want you to feel that you know what's going on with your body and have a deeper understanding of which hormones are changing and shifting. And so I want to invite you to take my hormone quiz that looks at the biggest hormone players. This quiz is short and at the end you'll receive a hormone report card. So if you're between the ages of 35 and 50, which is often my demographic, my audience, this super easy two minute hormone quiz will give you a lot of insight. Now I'm gonna have the link in the show notes for this episode, or you can go straight to drmarisa.com slash report card. So now that you have access to my quick hormone quiz, it's gonna be in the show notes. Again, drmarisa.com slash report card. Let's get started with one of my favorite pivots that can really move the needle in our metabolic health and help you to even drop stubborn belly fat. Because let me tell you, it is so hard to drop stubborn belly fat, hence why it's called stubborn belly fat to begin with. So the first one, and again, this may be a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I just want you to know that it is time to embrace it. So number one is lift heavy weights. So we need to dispel the myth that lifting heavy weights is gonna bulk us up. It isn't, it's not true. But what is true is that heavy lifting, right? I'm talking about a weight where you max out at six reps, not 10 to 15 reps. Heavy lifting is key to scorching belly fat, boosting metabolic flexibility, increasing strength and muscle mass, and helping to support blood sugar. Whether you like it or not, we will lose 20 plus percent of our strength by a time we are in menopause. And unless we work to maintain that strength, we will continue to lose it every single decade. Not only do we need muscle for energy, strength, and endurance, it's imperative for stable blood sugar, heart health, and metabolic health, and most important, longevity. If you want longevity, you have got to focus on those muscles. So my commitment this year is to lift heavier. That is the name of the game. I know it's gonna take time. I haven't lifted heavy in a while. Right now, my heaviest weights are like 25 pounds, but I'm ready to really step it up. I have a gym membership where they've got a lot of heavy weights. I'm going to be working through a program. And let me tell you, I am here for it. And really, the earlier that we start lifting heavy, the better. Now, that's not to say that I'm going to give up my Peloton rides or my HIIT training. There are so many great benefits to HIIT training and Peloton rides and even like, you know, strength training as well. But I know that I need to start lifting heavier if I'm going to preserve my muscle mass, my strength, and ultimately my longevity. Number two, adopt reverse fasting or early time-restricted eating. So I shared this last year, but the newest research in JAMA suggests if you're going to skip a meal, let it be dinner or aim for a smaller dinner earlier in the evening. So you've probably heard the statement, eat breakfast like a king or queen, lunch like a prince or princess, and dinner like a pauper. Well, the goal is to eat when the sun comes up and finish eating when the sun goes down. And that's because we are truly sun beings. That's how our circadian rhythms work. Eating in line with your circadian rhythm can make for better weight management as well as improved sleep, healthier blood sugar levels, and so much more. And as I mentioned with this reverse fasting or early time restricted fasting, it's a little bit different from traditional type of intermittent fasting because instead of eating dinner around 8 p.m. or maybe after 7 p.m. and skipping breakfast, you start your fast earlier in the day, preferably around 5 or 6 p.m. and then fast for 12 to 15 hours. This subtype referred to in the scientific literature is early time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding. Researchers have found that this type of fasting to be superior to just fasting at any time. So if you're intrigued by the concept of reverse fasting or early time-restricted eating, it's really important that we work in harmony with our circadian rhythms. That's ultimately what it comes down to. So here is how to get started. Plan to do a reverse fast daily, meaning you leave 12 to 13 hours between your early dinner and breakfast. For example, push dinner back to 5.30 or 6 p.m. and then plan to break your fast around 7 a.m. the next morning. Now, my personal eating window starts around 10 a.m. and ends around 5 to 6 p.m. every single day. So it's approximately a seven to eight hour window during the day when I'm eating. I try to aim to eat when the sun is out or like when the sun is up. And obviously right now, the sun is setting around 5 p.m. So we've been trying to eat in a window between 5 p.m. and 5.30 every single day to kind of adhere to the time of day that we are in right now during the winter. 
So here are the benefits of early eating, right? They are endless, but these are my favorite. Controlling blood sugar, enhancing metabolic flexibility, fighting inflammation, enhancing heart health, boosting deeper restful sleep, weight loss and management, prevention of chronic conditions, enhanced sustainable energy, and mitochondrial function. What I love about this is when we eat earlier, we really allow melatonin to boost up. We allow ourselves to work with our insulin sensitivity because the later and later it gets at night, we become more insulin resistant. And we really give ourselves a lot of time between our last meal and when we go to bed. So that allows our body to really digest, work that out so we can go into pure restore mode after you go to sleep. So you get deeper restful sleep and your body heals up a lot better. Now, if you are just getting started with intermittent fasting, here are three ways to set yourself up for success when applying intermittent fasting to your life and your body. And these are also great specifically in the perimenopause transition. Number one, before you start your fast, make sure the last meal of your day is high in protein, low in sugar, and low in refined carbs. This way you don't activate killer craving centers in your brain, and this is especially true in the evening. How often have you wanted to start intermittent fasting, but you ate a very carb-heavy dinner and found yourself super hungry late at night before going to bed? If your meal has adequate amount of protein, you are going to feel fuller longer, setting yourself up for success for that 12 plus hour circadian fast. Now, it's super important here to get sufficient protein. I cannot tell you how important this is. This is actually, this is pivot number three, <laughs> right? So... Every single meal you want, right? You want to have that sufficient amount of protein. We're talking about 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. For instance, a woman who weighs 130 pounds and has lean body mass of 100 pounds, I recommend between 80 and 100 grams of protein per day, breaking down to about 25 to 35 grams of protein per meal. Okay, number two. When you break your fast with the first meal of the day, ideally it's in the morning when you're still in a thermogenic state, I want you to break your fast with a savory meal with protein, healthy fats, and fiber. So the goal is not to focus on a sugar or carb-driven meal because the first meal of the day sets the tone for your metabolism and you will find yourself on a blood sugar roller coaster if your first meal of the day is a muffin or cereal or toast and jam with some orange juice. So making sure that every single meal you have every day is protein forward, right? Especially that first meal of the day so that you are not hangry for the rest of the day. So that's going to be my pivot. And then number three of this is eat between 25 and 35 grams of quality protein at every single meal, as I just mentioned. This pivot really supports the heavy lifting. We really need to preserve our muscle mass and we need all the essential amino acids to support our hormone changes. And so when we build out our meals, protein is the critical step. As one of my best friends shares, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, recommends that we need to step up our protein consumption by consuming, again, that 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So some protein-rich foods to consider. A meat, fish, eggs, legumes, nuts, seeds can help increase your metabolism definitely for a few hours. And this is because they require your body to use more energy to digest them. This is known as the thermic effect of food. Now, the thermic effect of food refers to the number of calories your body needs to digest, absorb, and process the nutrients in your meals. Research shows that protein-rich foods increase that thermic effect the most. Example, they increase your metabolic rate by 15 to 30% compared to just 5 to 10% with carbs and 0 to 3% with fats. It's also important to note that most women are simply not getting enough protein, especially as we enter our 40s and beyond, when it becomes so, so critical. And a low-protein diet leads to a decline in muscle mass and optimal metabolic function. So I think that one of the biggest pivots that we can make this year is just making sure that we're getting enough protein, whether those are protein shakes, whether those are like full meals at breakfast, like you're having leftovers from the night before, like we're on our detox right now. So I've had leftover salmon cakes for breakfast, leftover chicken for breakfast, leftover. We've been making these little ground turkey lettuce cups for breakfast. Honestly, anything we've had for dinner, I just reallocate it to breakfast as well making sure that I'm getting the adequate protein that I need, especially if I'm going to be lifting heavier and working out and moving my body more. Which leads me to pivot number four. Aim to walk 7,000 to 10,000 steps per day. Ideally, 15 to 20 minutes of that walking is after your biggest meals. 
but honestly, getting where you fit in. The best time of the day to walk is really any time. Morning is great because you boost your circadian rhythms and get out in nature and you get that sunlight and you really kind of boost your kind of sun bean. But then after meals to maintain stable blood sugar and then in the evening for relaxation and increasing metabolic flexibility. I mean, walking during different times of the day has different benefits. So really any time is a good time. Now, if you aren't sure if you're walking 7,000 or more steps a day, I highly recommend getting a tracker like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch for accountability. Now, I love my Fitbit Inspire. It is small and mighty and it gets the job done. And I like it a lot more than my whoop strap, mainly because my whoop strap doesn't count steps. I want to know what my steps are. And let me tell you, I hit 10,000 steps every single day. Even if it's 9 p.m. and I still have 2,000 steps to go, I just make it happen, right? There's enough stuff in my house to do as a mom that I can hit 10,000 steps in an hour between my bedtime at 10 p.m. All right, number five, especially I think this is a big non-negotiable, but it is to take your supplements. If you got off your supplement track during the holidays, it is time to get back on. So I'm going to share with you the non-negotiables that are really going to support your body during the perimenopause menopause transition. Magnesium, B vitamins, like activated B vitamin, methylated B vitamins, and all the B vitamins, like do not shortcut that. Omegas, vitamin D, adaptogens like rhodiola, holy basil, and ashwagandha, digestive enzymes, probiotics, and a great liver detoxification blend. If you have not tried my liver support blend, oh, you are missing out. Now, I carry many of these supplements with the highest of quality standards because I do not play when it comes to quality, and my supplements are made for women, and many can be used by men too, but they are made by women for women. That is the intention. If you want to go check out the Essentially Whole store to fill in the gaps, I highly recommend it. My fan favorites are obviously my magnesium, B vitamin, vitamin D. I love the Adrenal Love Blend. I love the Liver Support Blend. I love Hormone Balance. Those are my favorite favorites. And then I also love the Progest Restore, which is a game changer when you are navigating perimenopause into menopause. All right, number six. This one is such a powerful non-negotiable. And that is really just knowing that you are powerful and relevant and a rock star at any age. This is the time to not diminish who you are. It's the time to step into who you are going to become. Almost 50% of our lives are spent in perimenopause and beyond. So who you're going to become and what you're going to accomplish is still yet to come and probably the best of it is yet to come. You are going to continue to learn, thrive, connect, and create. There is no stopping you. My recommendation is that you own your power and support your body in becoming your best self because your best self is yet to come. Like that is what I know to be true. So that's it. Those are my six pivots. Obviously, one of my pivots had more pieces to it. That was the kind of your eating window and eating within your circadian rhythm. But again, the name of the game there is eat as early as you can because that really supports your metabolism and insulin resistance and really allows for more longevity due to getting the higher quality sleep that you need. I have noticed that since we've moved our dinner time between five and six, it has made a world of difference. Now, will there be a week or two where it's a little uncomfortable because you really want a snack late at night or you want a little treat or a little something? You know, my swap is I make a tea, I make a rooibos tea, I froth a little bit of unsweetened almond milk with some cinnamon and that does the trick. Or I'll do a sparkling water with a decaf tea as well. So again, just getting where you fit in, find that little ritual that can be a really sweet swap so that you don't find yourself doing any late night eating. And let me tell you, it makes a massive difference in your overall metabolic health and your energy levels in the morning. So now that you have my favorite game-changing pivots, I want you to know that it's not just about navigating perimenopause in your 40s. It's about living your best life all of the time and feeling great in your body and doing the things that you love. And we do the best when we are feeling healthy and energized. That's what this episode is all about. So I absolutely know that when we take control of our health and our healing journey and we pull the right levers, not the hardest levers, but the right ones, the right pivots that I mentioned earlier and focus on our health as a priority, really healing miracles begin to happen. I know because I have been there more than once myself and I 100% know it's possible to feel amazing and to have enough energy to show up in the morning for everyone and throughout the day and to feel like you have the capacity to live your mission without compromise. With all that said, I know how important it is 
to really identify if there are any hormones at play that are causing some of your symptoms. So I do recommend you going and checking out my hormone quiz in the show notes to get more clarity on what may be causing any major hormone imbalances outside of the normal shifts and changes that occur in perimenopause. Now, if you love these tips today, I know that some of them were a little bit like, okay, I got to gear up. But if you do love these tips, be sure to subscribe for more easy tips to heal your hormones and to upgrade your health. Until the next episode, have an amazing day.